today on the Perception and Action podcast. My review of a study comparing a traditional prescriptive approach to an ecological approach for training the action capacity of counter-movement jump performance. So it's time for a call to action. Hi, this is Rob Gray from Arizona State University. I've been on a now over 25-year journey as a researcher, professor, and high-performance consultant to understand how we acquire and adapt our perceptual motor skills. Welcome to the Perception in Action podcast, where I discuss how psychological research can be applied to improving performance, accelerating skill acquisition, and designing technologies. Now on to the show. Hi everyone, this is Rob Gray from ASU in the Perception in Action podcast, back with another article review. In today's episode, what I want to look at is a study looking at training the counter movement jump, right? And it's going to compare two different types of training, traditional uh, prescriptive training, which it's called, they get, the authors call cognitive training versus uh, an ecological dynamics based approach, which it's a very interesting interpretation of ecological dynamics approach, but I'll get to that. So here's the paper. Uh, exploring the influence of cognitive ecological dynamic approaches on counter moving jump enhancer, a comparative train, training study. Okay, um, that's the the basic uh, design. Okay, the title of the paper. Before I talk about what these are, I want to point out that what we're talking about here really is training, and we're going back to something I talked about a lot in earlier episodes: the difference between training action capacity versus a skill. Right. The ability to do a counter movement jump, which is basically jumping up in the air, um, is not a skill in my definition, right? Um, unless they're going to make that an Olympic sport sometime soon, that's not a skill, right? That's an action capacity, your ability to generate con what's co concentric force that you could potentially put into a skill, like jump, like playing football or, or hitting a baseball or something like that. Right. For example, there is research showing a relationship between counter movement jump performance and bat speed when swinging. Which you know, swinging a baseball bat is a skill. Um, it's a it's a it's a act where you're trying to adapt to, to achieve a particular outcome. Counter movement jump is just uh, action capacity. Right. You're not when you do a counter movement jump, you're not trying to achieve any goal other than doing the jump itself. Which is is so so that this so we're looking at training action capacity here, which I've talked about before in that previous episode. So if you're interested, have a look. We're not really looking at skill training. So this is a bit different than the previous studies I've talked about comparing and contrasting these different methods. Okay. So the counter movement jump, right? The, so the counter movement jump is a it most I think most people have seen this. Is a you have the athlete stand on a force plate. They're doing they're jumping up in the air, right? So they're going crouching down, bending their legs to to store generate force with the ground and then exploding upwards. Right. It can be done in two different ways, which will turn out to be a pretty important. One is in a free arm movement jump where you can swing your arms however you want to get yourself higher in the air. And the other was this kind of the standard test where you have to keep your arms by your side when you jump, which we'll just refer to this CM with the initial CMJ, right? So those are the two basic types of this action, this, this um, action capacity test, right? And we know, right, we're, we're taking the force, we're putting it into the action, right? As I mentioned, what they're going to do is compare um, two different approaches. As I mentioned, the, their interpretation of what an ecological approach is a little weird. Basically, they're breaking it down into the extent to which the coach uh, practice is coach-led versus athlete-led, right? So in their, their cognitive training, you're going to see the practice is all coach-led. The coach is deciding on the, the, the gym exercises, weight room exercises you're going to do to improve your counter movement jump performance, where in ecological uh, dynamics, the athletes are going to be much more involved. Okay, so that's the basic idea here. Um, so they're going to compare these two different approaches. I'll talk about them in detail in a second. Their main hypothesis was this one is the counter movement, the standard counter movement jump test, which has very, you're not allowed to put your arms into it, has a very kind of prescribed, typical, um, not, so it doesn't allow for much. Uh, redundancy, right? There's not that many different ways you can do it. That's what their argument is. So they did not, they expected to the cognitive approach where we tell you exactly how to do it to, to kind of have a greater advantage. Whereas the arms free one where there's more variation in how you can execute the, the jump, 
that was where the benefit of the ecological dynamic approach is really going to shine through. And that's where they expected to find the, the, the benefit. Okay. So they had 36 participants who were just members of a local gym. They divide them into cognitive group training group and any called dynamics training group, roughly the same age, same body mass um, in the groups. Okay. Um, they pre and post, they, they assessed the two different methods. So they tested, looked at your jump, your jump height, essentially, um, and your ability to generate force in the arms free and the standard test. Um, between the two, uh, the groups did 12 weeks of training, which each training session was 90 minutes. Okay. So that's the basic design. Here's the thing for those that haven't seen it. Um, the top is showing uh, the standard counter movement jump where you bend down, bend your knees, and then jump up. You're, you have your arms held at your side. The, um, the bottom is showing the arms free one where you can put your arm swing into it. And obviously you could probably jump, usually jump higher in the free arms, right? But you have to, co you can coordinate the timing of when you use your arms and how you use your arms, right? There's more possibility for variability in the movement solution. It's a basic idea. The cognitive group, they went through this cycle of training with specific drills designed by the coach to improve leg strength, right? Um, there were um, different types of uh, muscle training excellence, you know, strength exercises, one focusing on power, uh, plyometric one. So kind of standard gym routine you might see, right? The details of it, right, they went through initial warm-up phase and the coach uh, prescribed a whole bunch of different drills to them, drop jumps, uh, ladder skipping, you know, uh, all these different repetitive medicine ball, all these kind of standard activities you might be do in the gym to improve your jump, right? So the main, the coach is telling them, giving them a, a prescribed training program, right? And they're going through this. That That's essentially what the cognitive group is. It's a little bit different, right? The coach is not telling them. I, I, it's not clear whether, I assume the coach is giving them feedback on how to do these exercises properly, right? How to properly do a drop jump in terms of technique. It's not really spelled out in the paper, but to be kind of prescriptive and cognitive, you would assume that's what's going on. The ecological dynamics group. So the ecological, as I mentioned, is a very strange. Um, what they did, the coach, essentially what they did before each practice session was they had the players watch a demonstration of the uh, counter movement jump, whichever one they were doing. And they had, they essentially sat around in a circle and kind of brainstorm different uh, uh, exercises that might be, that might benefit this might help improve it. So they're co-designing practice with the coach, right? They're, they're, they're directly involved in the design of practice and, and thinking about what might improve this ability. They're also in the warm up phase. They're allowed to do uh, much more variation in the movements, and um, you know, so that that's the basic design. So they video, they watch a video of the skill. They sit around in circles and talk about the goals and the issues and help design the training plan. They do a kind of very dynamic warm up that's more than the cognitive group, and then they do um, the tools that they developed, that they co designed it through practice, right? And so that's the basic design, right? So that's the, the ecological dynamics. I said not kind of unusual manipulation, I think, but I'll talk about that more. So that those are the two training groups. What do they find? So both groups both groups for both jumps improved with training. Um, the, for the con cognitive group, the, the improvement in the, count, the standard CMJ was 12%, um, and for the free arms, it was about 8%. For the ecological dynamics group for the counter movement is 10%. And for the free arms, it was almost 20%. Um, so the um, what they found, so those are the kind of the overall results. If we look at kind of statistically, for the standard counter movement jump, there was no significant difference in the amount of improvement for the two training groups. They have the kind of the same results. For the counter movement free arms jump, the there was a greater improvement for the ecological dynamics group. It's significantly larger improvement in performance, right? So look, this is kind of the basic findings. The authors argue that this supports their hypothesis that in when you're training a movement with more possibility for variation than the movement solution, ecological dynamics is better. When you don't, when you're not, when you're training one that has a very small number of possible movement solutions has to be done in a very particular way, then the cognitive, that's more suited to cognitive approach. Okay, so that was the overall conclusions of the paper. Here's my thoughts, right? As I mentioned, this is a very odd example of the ecological approach. They're mostly focused, the biggest 
um, manipulation that I can see is they're fo- allowing co- for co-design of practice, right, for the athlete. Um, they're allowing to them to think about the goals. So really, they're they're focusing on self-regulation, which is self-regulation. I've talked about in the past is the athlete being involved in the planning of their performance, assessing performance, reflecting on performance, regulating their their outcomes. So it's more focused on intent and goals. It's not really getting at the heart of ecological dynamics, self-organization, right? We're not really focusing on that, right? Um, self-organization and having athlete-centered practice, self-regulation and athlete-centered practice are really not exclusive qualities of ecological dynamics approaches, right? You can have those things in traditional prescriptive approaches too, right? Um, it's self-organization that's the key piece. There's not really a, um, much evidence that they uh, had the athletes do much variation in the movements of during training variability, for example, doing something like differential learning. And there's really no evidence that I can see that they use any kind of constraints that approach manipulations, right? So it's not the best example of ecological dynamics approach in my opinion, right? But what they found for me, right? They found for me, the finding that there's no significant difference in counter movement jump performance for the two groups is adding to this body of evidence that, right? What it's kind of shooting down the idea that, in order to train the basic fundamentals of the skill. So in order to train the ability to perform the skill in a decontextualized, very uh, restricted fashion, like dribbling a soccer ball or shooting a basketball or jumping up and doing a counter movement jump. The idea for a long time, right, is that you need to decompose that action. We need to take it out of context. You need to um, have very blocked practice, all these kind of evidence. This study, for me, adds to the growing body of uh, literature, which includes the train-as-you-play soccer study, which showed that small athletes develop the fundamentals of dribbling right, um, in small-sided games, just as well as they do in dribbling around cones. And this study on weightlifting, um, which I talked about in these two different episodes, right, um, which they, um, they uh, looked at weightlifting and showing the basic form of weightlifting can be developed, again, without using task decomposition, which using more of a constraints-led approach, right? So the idea here is, is if you're going to develop a skill, if you want to, if you're going to, tr- the skill you're developing is going to be tested in a very restricted, um, limited way, then what you would expect is th- that's not where we expect the ecological approach to shine, right? The ecological approach um, focuses on dexterity and adaptability, right? The uh, you're not going to see that in dribbling around cones or uh, you know or in doing a counter movement jump where you can't put your arms into it, where there's a little possibility for variability in t- technique. So for me, the fact that you get equal outcomes in this, in a, in a, a method that's ha- a test that's heavily stacked against the ecological approach is, is a positive outcome for me. Um, but what you do see, where you do see the expected benefits, where adapting and allowing for m- more variability in movement solutions is potentially going to give you better performance. For example, when doing a counter movement jump with free arms, that's where you expect. And it wasn't measured here, but what the what most people in ecological dynamics would propose, me included, is where you're really going to see the shine is when you get the athletes to try to put this new capacity counter movement jump into the skill. Right. The idea is when you train it using an ecological approach. If, in a better way, I would have done. But then you, ex- I would expect different transfer. And in, in my presentation, I mentioned at the start, uh, capacity versus skill. I go through all the different ways that I suggest training action capacity in, eco- in a method consistent with ecological t- approach, which will lead to better transfer. Right. So that's where we expect the ecological approach to shine. And you did see some evidence of that when we looked at the counter movement jump free arms in this study. So this is another study we can add to my list, right? So I think I've talked about this before. If you go to perceptionaction.com forward slash comparative, I have an ongoing list I keep of studies that can directly compare prescriptive methods to some ecological approach. Um, this study, is a, this is the 19th one, I think, I have listed. And there all the links are there. Um, this is a little bit different, obviously, because it's not a, focused on a skill. It's focused on the capacity. But, but there you have it. I think it's... I think it's an interesting study overall, even though it's a little strange though how they did the ecological approach. Okay, that's it for today's episode. Remember, you can contact me at robgray at asu.edu or follow me on Twitter at shakeyweights. To find out more about the podcast, please check out perceptionaction.com. 
Finally, to support the podcast and receive bonus materials, including a monthly coaches meetup, please head over to patreon.com forward slash perception action. This is Rob Gray from ASU. Cheers for now and keep them coupled. Gone through San Luis.